about evictions. When you speak about evictions, there are two clients. One is the landlord, he's a guy who owns a property, he's renting it out, and then there's the tenant. In uh, certain circumstances, you can actually withhold uh, the money, you can pay it into your attorney's trust account, on condition that he releases it as soon as something is done. It happened to me in Pretoria once. I had a running battle with the landlord, refused to give me the keys, the access keys to the, to the place, uh, thinking that the two keys which he gave me was like a remote control to get through the security gates, uh, should be enough. And I said to him, well, I need another one because I have a grown up child here who needs to come and go. And then his attitude was, well, I don't care. Well, let me tell you, he kept extremely quickly when I withheld the payment and just paid it into a trust account. And uh, then suddenly, out of the blue, you know, the, the keys arrived and the money was released. And of course, there were no shaking of hands and saying, we're sorry because I'm not sorry. I'll do it again. Because then the one thing which I cannot stand in law is when people are treated unfairly. And it is because of the abuse from the landlords that the government brought out certain laws to protect the tenant. There's nothing wrong with that. I also want to say to any farmers who happens to be listening here, you cannot just go and kick a guy out who has been living on your farm. He too has certain rights in South African law. Uh, the law in South Africa is, is on the side of a tenant. So the constitution will say to you that you cannot evict somebody, you cannot throw him out of a property without a court order. And to get the court order you need legal assistance and you can only get that order under certain conditions. Now most lawyers will act for the property owner and very few will act for the tenant because the tenant doesn't have money. It, it comes down to that. But then a question that I'm asked often is, is it possible to evict somebody during the time of Corona? And the answer is no, you cannot evict somebody during the time of Corona or during COVID. While well, those emergency regulations are in place, you cannot evict somebody. Now this got nothing to do with the government being nice to you because governments are never nice to you. Uh, if you trust your government, <laughs> there's something wrong with you. You should really never ever trust your government. I, I find it in Europe that people trust their governments and uh, sadly they will wake up to what the government really is one day. But the reason why you cannot evict somebody during the time of COVID has got nothing to do, as I said, with government being nice. Now this got to do with where must the guy go to. If he's not allowed to leave his property because he's in a lockdown, uh, then of course you can't get him to leave. And that's what it's about. But that doesn't say that you should now stop paying your rent. You, you still have to pay your rent. Uh, because at some stage the evictions will start again. And it's going to start right across the world and you're going to see violence, you're going to see a lot of anger, you're going to see a lot of frustrations. So just be aware of that, it's coming. Mm -hmm. To get a court order, of course this uh, landlord has to go to his attorney or has to go to somebody with knowledge. Don't come to me, I'm not going to act for you. And uh, he will then go to court and he will say that these people are there illegally, unlawfully. And normally they be unlawfully because the contract has run out, the agreement between them with the rental, or perhaps the guy didn't pay him, or he's staying there without a legal right to be there. Now these are normally the reasons. And then they go to court and the court will look at it and the court will not only decide on the legal merits, the court will also decide on the social justice type of thing. They don't call it that, they call it something else, but it comes down to social justice. They ask if it's uh, equitable uh, to have his family thrown onto the out, out of the house. And sometimes the court will say no. And then you're really bothered if you're a landlord, but then you can't get him out. And then he's staying there, he's not paying rent. And uh, then your property becomes what we call hijacked. It often happens in the inner cities in South Africa. Uh, people just move in, they don't pay. Uh, the landlord then cuts the water and lights and the uh, entire place become a hovel. It becomes a really, really bad place to live. Before you run to the court, to get your court order, you have to give notice. And that's normally done uh, in writing. But you're going to do it. So you will first ask the people to leave by themselves. 
then you will say to them, okay, you haven't left now, here's it in official letter to you to leave. Then it's followed up by an attorney's letter to leave. And only then, if they didn't leave, then at that stage, you have to approach the court. And it will cost you a lot of money. Then there's another trick which you can do is if you have a tenant and uh, you simply don't go to court on the day that this hearing is taking place, you'll probably get away with it for a few times. The court will simply postpone it until you arrive. But at some stage, once again, this is going to run out and this guy is going to get his court order and he's going to go to the sheriff. It's got nothing to do with a police function. They are merely messengers of a court. That's all they are, the sheriff in South Africa. It's got nothing to do with the police. They will then go there and they have to throw you out there. And of course, it's not that, that easy to throw people out. In uh, certain parts of the community, if you try that, you will be killed. Or there might be a good, uh, a good size riot going on in the background. So uh, it's hard. This, this is really not easy. I must just put in one caveat here. When I said this is based on uh, equity and social justice more than anything else, at times it's only where the tenant has been living there for more than six months. Then the courts have to, by, by law, have to look at other things as well. So folks, what I'm saying to you here is that uh, renting out a property in South Africa is, is dangerous. I wouldn't do it. And I wouldn't recommend doing it. The only way that you can be sure that you're going to get your income back is to go the Airbnb route. Because these people pay up front and uh, Airbnb, these type of places, will then of course pay you. Uh, less any damages, things like that. But to put your faith into somebody just to go into your property and to pay you every month is really uh, taking a chance. Uh, sometimes when you do business, especially in the uh, fancy parts of Pretoria, you do business with embassies, very high risk, very, very high risk. Of course, people will disagree with me, I'm sure, but uh, tell me, what are you going to do if this embassy people don't pay you? What are you going to do? You cannot sue that guy, you cannot kick him out, you can do nothing. It's all on trust. So what uh, you should do is use the Nigerian model. The Nigerian model, and I know because I worked in West Africa as a legal advisor for about two years, is to pay the entire rent up front. So if you rent a place for three years, you're going to pay for three years up front. The other way to do it is short term. Uh, because after six months we know that this tenant is getting certain rights. So what you do is you reduce the time period in which he uh, rents it to less than six months. So that is it, uh, a short uh, talk about evictions. It's a subject which is, which is hard, because I say again that people are right on both sides. On the one hand you are entitled to your money, on the other hand we shouldn't be inhuman. And sadly, the two don't always mix.